Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando, that's Corey, and today we're doing Spring Breakers. Before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. And if you want to follow the show, you can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Sure. Mm. At Kiss the Reviews. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get into the uh, into the cast of 2008 Spring Breakers. This film stars James Franco as Alien, Selena Gomez as Faith, Vanessa Hudgens as Candy, Ashley Benson as Britt, Rachel Karine as Cotty, and Gucci Mane as Archie. A couple of things about this movie right off the rip. You're getting okay. If you watch this movie, and I think it's on HBO Max right now, um, but if you watch this movie, you're getting three features in one. At the beginning, you get spring break titties, and like, yeah, and drinking and partying and having a good time. And then you get like taken four. And then at the end, it cuts to like the new version of GTA 6. Like that's, you're getting three featured like movies all in one. Yeah, I hated all three of them in that case. <laughs> um, and I think I think it's doing this script a lot of justice to be like, yeah, you get three whole movies that you barely got 45 minute Hallmark special if you cut the repeat, 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 repeat over and over. God damn it. That's There's fair. so much time wasted. In an That's hour fair. and a half, holy shit! Yeah, um, I wish yeah, fucking so... I wish Vanessa Hudgens would have stuck a fucking gun in my mouth, and not for the sexual innuendo. <sighs> we know you'd take it. It's all right. It's all right. I'll we don't judge it. here. We don't. Well, I'll <laughs> we take don't, it. We don't judge here. Well, let's get into this film, okay? Shall we? So this movie opens with spring break scenes on the beach as dubstep plays and we got some Skrillex going on. And I know it, it doesn't it doesn't matter what the movie is, but when it comes to spring break. I've been on spring break. I went to college like I've been to. You know, I've been to Florida. I've been to Myrtle Beach. Like I've been to a few different places for spring break. Nothing ever looked like this ever in the history of my spring breaks. And I don't know if I just picked the wrong area every single time. Yeah, because you're not a poor. This is how <laughs> poor's party. It's disgusting. You were correct. Here's the thing, and this is what I have noticed about living in florida and and noticing things about florida like obviously it's hot outside right mm -hmm. spring break starting to get the weather starting to you know warm back up and and yada yada um everybody got dirty motherfucking feet everywhere like <laughs> dirty feet some... dude you can smell the ass coming out of the tv ain't a person wash their ass in a week in this whole fucking movie James Franco smells like shit and patchouli oh. oil. Like <laughs> you know that's what he smells like in this movie. And weed. Like <laughs> you were right. So we then see Faith, Britt, Candy, and Cotty, who are childhood friends and apparently are the only ones left on campus as everyone else has gone to South Florida for spring break. And Britt, Candy, and Cotty decide that they're going to rob this local like chicken shack to get the money they need to go on spring break. And they steal their, like a professor's El Camino and they go rob this place. And again, because they're all poors, which most college kids are. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently they're really poor because they can only come up with like $300 between them. And they're like, that's not going to get it done. If you plan well, it'll get it done. It'll, yeah, all you need to do is get there. No, 100%. That's 
I was thinking the same thing, especially when this is set. But I will say this. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, everyone wanting to commit crimes for money. Uncle Corey here. Uh, it's cool you want to go rob something. Totally fine. No problem with it. Don't start with a truck stop in a truck stop diner. Because IRL, you're getting buckshot to your fucking guts in about 13 seconds. They ain't playing that shit. They're trying to eat yeah. their fucking Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes. They ain't got time for you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if they're having a good day, they got a lot lizard they're going to pick up outside. But you robbing them with your fucking squirt pistol ain't a thing. And a fucking mallet. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. You, you, you rob the place with a squirt gun that looks like a real gun. FYI. No, it doesn't. No, you know it doesn't. It, you know what else it doesn't? It doesn't feel like a real gun when it's pressed against your head. When it's pressed against the back of your head, as they do in this scene, you're like, oh, that's plastic. And why is it leaking water? Yeah. <laughs> so, And the one bitch just got swinging a mallet. You're not Thor. You're 105 pounds. So forget buckshot. <laughs> Somebody's dotting this girl right between the eyes with their freaking meat hook. You were correct. Yeah, this is this is literally the college white girl version of the Pulp Fiction restaurant scene. Yes. Like, they think it's just, like, that's what you do. And it's like, Absolutely. sweetheart, sweetheart, no. You swing a mallet at a fucking truck driver and while he's trying to eat his dinner, he's going to shove it straight yes. up your ass. Absolutely. So No way. They, they get this money, right? And then they take it to Faith because uh, she's apparently the accountant for the group. So she holds it for them and they're off to spring break. When they get to Florida, they start partying. The girls go to this beachside concert. And this is where they see Alien, this like white rapper played by James Franco. And by the way, James Franco with a, with a grill and cornrows is the funniest shit I've ever seen. I know this is supposed to be like kind of comedic mm -hmm. but also very serious because this is where it starts to like veer into like <laughs> dirty taken movie you were correct and i gotta rewind here a little bit and i'm sorry to do this again so quickly but um Corey's life lessons hi college kids uncle Corey here so your robbery was successful and you go to tell your Christian accountants like, hey, we did it. When you take her into a private spot in your dormitory or wherever the fuck you guys are living, what you probably shouldn't do is all lay down in the communal shower. Because if you've been to school, you know like one of the things everybody does in the dorm rooms of communal showers, even the girls dorm, is wear motherfucking flip-flops in there because you are guaranteed to get a fungus on your fucking feet. Like, Absolutely. literally day one. So, don't lay on the fucking tile on the bottom of a fucking communal shower. That is easily the most disgusting thing. And at that point, I'm just like, oh, I see why these girls are going to party the way they do because they're fucking disgusting. They got hepatitis C before they ever left the fucking dorm. The girls then here, while they're in Florida, they describe to Faith how they robbed the chicken shack. And, you know, Faith is taken aback. And listen, that's that's fine that she's like, oh, my God, like you did that. And you said that and you, you, you said you were going to kill them. And the, bitch, you are partying with this money. You are complicit in this crime. You may not have said the shit. You may not have did the shit. But you, you've been controlling the money, okay? You've been the accountant for this whole scheme that we had planned out. And you are a 100% involved in this whole thing. Don't act like just because you went to Bible study a few times that you're like washing your hands clean of all of this shit. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett ain't going to help you find the Lord this time, bud. <laughs> no. It's no, just not, not happening. Are you but... for Jesus? Are you pumped for Jesus? Because I sure am. That'd have been great if he hit her over the head with the guitar and been like, then we're into it, devil. With you. 
That'd have been fantastic. Um, yeah, dude, like, there are just some questions you don't want answered. And sh the thing is, she knows it because her friends are batshit fucking crazy. Yes. Like, legitimately off the fucking reservation. So, yeah. maybe don't ask that question. And then yeah. also, since we're just running with the theme of don't lay down in dirty places... Maybe if you didn't ask that question, your friend with the big titties wouldn't have to lay down on the goddamn asphalt in a 7-Eleven parking lot, too. With, like, her face plastered against the floor because they got to reenact something for you. Just an FYI, if you're telling Ugh. stories, you could just tell the stories and be animated up here, like, from the waist up. You don't have to, like, actually get down on the ground. You could just say, like, hey, we made them get down on the ground, and they were like, that's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We don't need a whole fucking dinner theater scene with it, too. So the, the girls then go to this party at a motel that gets completely out of control. They get arrested. They spend the night in county jail and they appear in court the next day. The judge gives them the choice, either pay the fine or spend two more days in jail. And it just so happens that two of Alien's homies were arrested, too. And he has come to post their bail, and then he bails the girls out of jail here, too. They're walking them out, and, like, this big garage door, like, is this in a, is, is county jail in, like, a house? Because there's this, like, garage door that comes up. There's, like, bikes hanging on the, and not, like, police bikes, just regular yeah. old bikes hanging on the wall. It's like, oh, do they get one of those? Like, that's your parting gift for spring break when you get arrested? That's, no, that's what the cops confiscate from black kids riding their bikes home from school. <laughs> absolutely and that's then, a, that's the most florida thing about this whole movie <laughs> the garage opens up and there's alien in his long ass cornrows and his grill and his camaro with the with the dollar sign like they're 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 hubcaps can we just call them what they are they're hubcaps they're not Dude, this <laughs> no this is the most ratchet motherfucker some dude he knew at the fucking mill goddamn welded those fucking rims for him <laughs> just put him rims. on there yeah he probably bought him at a fucking cracker barrel <laughs> the fuck out of here man it was right next to the game with like the little pegs <laughs> that <she That's> it. <laughs> dude the minute i see this dude okay and and i'm a guy i can kind of hold my own i'm not 105 pounds in a bikini walking out of this jail but they are. Um, and me in real life, when as soon as I see this dude, I'm like, thanks for the bail guy. Deuces, I'm out. Corey's life lessons. Hi, ladies. Uncle Corey here. We've talked in the past about giving up the nay nay before you know you actually get the thing back in return if that's the uh, a barter system you have agreed to. Also, within that, you're not obligated to do shit. If some fucking simp wants to post your fucking bond for you, dope. Deuces. I'm heading back to Kentucky today. This yes. is fucking done. I just spent a fucking night or two in the slammer, and I got this fucking close to spending an extra two days in there because I couldn't pay the cocaine fine, apparently, that's levied in fucking Florida. I didn't know that was just a thing. Like, eh, we'll just make you pay your coke fine and you can go home. Which is awesome. I would have done so much more cocaine if like, that was actually an option. <laughs> but you're not obligated in any way to get in this dude's fucking ride. And they all yes. walk out and he's like, hey, what's up, lady? My name's Alien. You want to get in my car? And they're like, yeah, I do. I think I have to now because this fucking creepy fucking guy posted my bond. And he's like, yeah, I did, bitch, it's getting my ride. Get the fuck out of here, dude. This dude is straight out of Malibu's Most Wanted. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> he's like, my name's B-Rad. <laughs> dude, this motherfucker's grill is plastic. He got him out of a box of fucking Count Chocula and just cut off the vampire teeth. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my God. But then he takes him to, like, the beach, you know, just to have a little talk. So he's talking to them. Um, a little talk about how the twins like, hey, they do everything <laughs> together. 
They eat together. They sleep together. They fuck the same bitches. You know, they like double <laughs> penetration, right? That is when I'm absolutely yeah. out. Even if you take the ride, okay, I get it. You're stuck at the police station. Like, who knows where the fuck your money's at? Like, maybe it's all gone. You don't know. Okay, maybe you get the ride. And then he gets to the beach and it's like, okay, he just wants to talk. The minute DP starts coming up, I'm out. I'm out. Like, we're, what, what, are we, what are we talking about here? You got twins yeah. over here that just, let's just say, they, they, we'll call it like it is. They look a little rapey. And then you got creepy Malibu's Most Wanted, B-Rad, talking about how creepy and rapey they are. Yeah, this is, this is when you just, you, you wipe your hands clean and you're like, guys, this has been real, but I'm out. Yeah, and, and just in case you're a neophyte, when they're talking about double penetration, they're not talking about spit roasting. Because if they were, they would have said spit roasting. Yeah. What they said was double penetration, which means you're getting one in there and one right next door to it. And that is not going to be fun. You were right. You know it's not going to be fun because even the wild, crazy fucking kooky bitch whose always idea is to go rob things and shoot people, even she makes a face like, oh, fuck. No, thank you. Yes. Their dicks look super dirty. Everybody's everything in this is super <laughs> dirty. And you know that from the fucking mountain of crotch shots you get. You oh, can yeah. see crabs running in these kids' hair <laughs> while they dance. After B-Rad here talks to the girls about how he's a hustler and a rapper and whatever the hell else, he takes them to a party. Faith starts crying here almost immediately and leaves like walks out. Cause she's like, I'm out. Like this is, this is where the rubber hits the road with the girls because you have three of the girls that are like, what's so what you don't like black people. And she's like, no, I don't like rapey people. Like this looks like it's going to be an underground DVD that gets sold very, very soon. Like that's oh, yeah. what's happening next. And Nick Cage is searching for all of these kids yeah. in about two weeks. A hundred percent. And she's like, dude, you want to smoke a little? You want to drink a little? You want to show your boobies? She's like, I'm in college too. I'm down with all of that. This bridge too far is what we call that. Well, yeah, because like the real life version of James Franco walks up to her. And I don't even think this was like a take in the film. I think they just accidentally were filming when fucking Rick the Hormone Monster walked up to Selena Gomez and started touching her hair and like, hey, baby, come back to my show. Look at that. That's awesome, baby. You want to have me do some sink on my hang low? No, I don't. I do not. I do not. I would start crying in that situation. I started crying watching the movie in that situation. Yeah. And then Franco's like touch. I think you're so beautiful, baby. I won't let anything happen. What are you talking about? Yes. And she and and Selena Gomez here is like, deuces, I'm out. You don't see her the rest of this fucking movie. You want to know why? Because she's safe in Nebraska or wherever the hell they go to school. At. Yeah. And I have a feeling this is just my take on it. I could be wrong. But I have a feeling Selena Gomez got to set. And was like doing her thing in this movie. And then she's like called her agent. It was like, you got to get me the fuck out of this movie I now. Wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it one second. Is it possible this story is true? I, th I truly believe that is what happened in this film. If she was just like, get I, me the, I do not want to be in this. Like, this is not, this is not the piece of art where I am coming out to the world. I'm, yes. I'll save myself for only murderers in the building. I'm good. Alien then here takes the other girls that stick around back to his place and he's showing them like everything he has and all the money and blah, blah, blah. And listen, for all the money you have and all, all your things are chinsy and cheap, like your, your guns, probably the most expensive shit he has in the house are his guns, but his guns are like nailed like the, there's there's no hooks it's not like oh look at this custom thing that i got and this is where i hang my gun no it's literally just like 
he stole a couple of packs of nails from like a house that was getting built down the street and just came in and just nailed nails into the wall to hang his fucking stupid guns. And he's like, ah, look at my cologne. Fuck you. Get out of here with your fucking cologne. He probably bought the he probably bought the fucking nails at the same flea market he brought his ninja weapons at. <laughs> These are my nunchucks. Okay, okay. Like he he literally okay. had every teenage mutant ninja turtles weapon hanging on his wall, and nobody said anything about it. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, ladies. Um, I, I mean, I guess this can go out to guys too. Um, you you meet this dude, right? And whether you like him, you don't like him, whatever, he's a baller and he's a hustler and you want to go back to his, you know, his mansion and party. Cool. When when you get to, to said house to party, right? And they're showing you all of the things that they have that make them awesome. And this is what makes me be rad. Um, don't do what these girls do here and stick around because like danger and things. The minute you see a grown man older than 17 has nunchucks hanging on his wall, get the fuck out of that situation immediately. It the guy will be like, oh yeah, we met this cool guy at the bar and he said he's got some like chicks at the house and we're gonna go drink a party and like, what, what? Like, cool, that's all well and good. You get to the house, if there are nunchucks on the wall in any room in that house, just leave because nothing good can come of that. No, totally agree. Just, just throwing that one out there. I'm also going to take the nunchucks off my wall tonight, but <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> so later, Alien then takes the girls to a strip club where he runs into Big Arch, his former mentor and friend and current enemy. And Big Arch tells him to go back to ripping off spring breakers and he's not a, a thug. And now they're, I don't know, they're button heads like this. This storyline literally comes out of fucking nowhere. And I was like, this doesn't need to be a thing. Don't know why it is. No, it's it's stupid and it's as childish as the girls are in this movie because constantly they talk about like, I'm going to do something to you. You're there with a gun. Do something to him. Hell yes. Arch gets pissed. He's like, oh, he's in. he came to my territory. This is my club, blah, 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 blah. What does he do? Hey, man, what are you doing here? You listen here, bucko. You stay out of my business. Get the fuck out of here, man. This ain't how real fucking dudes handle that shit. Listen, James, Franco, you, James Franco is getting stomped and those girls are getting sold to Epstein Island tonight. That's yes. real life. That's 100% real life. Back at Aliens, um, after this scene, we have the playing with gun scene where the girls basically face fuck James Franco with, with the guns that he has just laying around in the house and hanging Ooh. on the walls. Sexy and dangerous. Hoo ah. But we then have the girls, alien taking the girls dressed in matching swimsuits and pink ski masks to go rob spring breakers. And as Britney Spears plays in the background is the, uh, okay. This was my favorite part of the movie. If the whole movie was kind of like this, because this was really funny. The girls are like, yeah, and, you know, he's playing on the piano and they're all singing and they're it was this very um, like Charles Manson esque because all the girls are doing like ring around the rosy holding the guns and he's playing the piano and then cutaways to them robbing spring breakers. And like if the movie was like that, like, yay, spring break. And then they meet this one scumbag and then they just go rob people. And, and that's what you see, like. That would be great. I actually laughed out loud. I, I don't know if the, the writer or director <laughs> meant this to be funny, but with that said, I thought this was hilarious. I loved this whole this whole series of scenes together. Yeah, this was probably the best part of the movie. Although, again, <clears throat> I don't understand the jump cuts because they take away Yes. You keep cutting back to them dancing, and then you keep cutting back to them like in the rain, they're flipping people off, and then you cut back. It's fucking exhausting. Show me the fucking thing you want to show me, and then move on to the next scene. 
Yes. Don't drag the scene out for five or ten minutes because you got to jump cut it with like, oh, we're dancing and I'm interlacing this with like this sweet Britney Spears. Fuck off. Exactly. This was like if it was trying to be cutting edge or edgy or whatever the fuck was happening with this filmmaking, I did not like it. And to be clear, I love A24 movies, the production company behind yes. this. Absolutely. A24 is the shit. So if this is what started it, fine. If this is what kind of got them and helped refine their style of movies, yeah. I'm all for it because I see their fingerprints all over this. However, this was a first draft, and we all know how I feel about keeping those first drafts in the box. Yes. Well, and we we then, after this, we cut to Big Arch rolling up on Alien one night in his car, warning him to back off again. And as he drives away, one of Big Arch's dudes just opens fire on the car. One bullet hits Cotty in the arm. She now wants to go home, so she leaves the next morning. And then for the rest of this film, she's nowhere to be found. And then there were two. See, this is, again, this whole fucking thing is so... There are zero consequences to anybody's actions oh, yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. No, what's happening in real life with Faith and with Cody here is they're getting locked and chained in the garage somewhere. Like, this turns into a fucking or R. Shot. Kelly situation. Yes. Yeah. They're like, getting this, killed this... by Alien because they're going to fucking yeah. talk. Exactly. But, yeah, Alien's just like, yeah, cool. You could just, you could leave, apparently. Um, we get the Brittany and Candy calling their mothers and telling them that spring break was awesome and they're back at school. And again, talking about scenes that didn't need to be there, like this didn't really need to be there. Um, None of it did all of the calls home. And yeah, I, yeah. and again, I get what you're trying to do. And, you know, like they lead different lives and they put up this facade and um, yeah, we fucking get it, dude. You're yeah. not breaking new ground with this. So why are you drowning me in it? I'm being yeah. waterboarded with goddamn jump cuts of calls home to mom and dad throughout the movie or grandma. And they're all fucking waste of time. Yes, absolutely. But then after this, it was well, teenage, guess... teenage girls are duplicitous psychos. <laughs> That's a fucking news flash. <laughs> guess what else? Water's wet. But during this whole like phone calls to mom thing, we get Brit and Candy going with Alien in his boat to Big Arch's mansion to kill him. And Alien gets shot immediately on the dock as they're walking up to, to the mansion. And Brit and Candy then kill everyone, including Big Arch. And then they steal his Lambo and the movie ends. And the moral of the story, guys, is that the minute a black dude gets successful, white women will come and take your shit, period. That's the moral of this fucking movie. And by the way, while I'm on things, okay, I, I get the, the look of it. Oh, girls in bikinis with ski masks. and Yeah, like, I guess that looks cool. You know what would look even cooler is, I don't know if, if one of these sons of bitches had a flak jacket on, a bulletproof vest, because I'm sorry, a bikini ain't protecting your titties from getting shot. Like, you got your midriff open. Everything's open. If you get shot, you're dead. Nah, they're not getting shot. They got white Jesus and the Constitution of these United States, pal. You were correct. I couldn't actually sum it up any better than you did. Uh, I couldn't help but notice the only people that died through this whole thing was literally a house full of black people getting straight murked yes. by infants in bikinis. <laughs> It's just and like, this is, so, this so I said like the most white woman thing is walking away with no yeah. repercussions. Yes, that is very true. To take it a step further now, the most Florida white woman thing is to kill a house full of black people in bikini and wearing a bikini, stealing their car and just driving home. <laughs> and that's it. 
end of movie no Bye. repercussions Bye. and this 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 whole last scene of them like getting ready taking the boat murdering everybody and then driving away in the lambo was the most grand theft auto thing i have ever seen in real life <laughs> Like this, literally, this whole this whole ending scene looked like a GTA mission. Like, grab these two women in bikinis and put ski masks on them and go rob Big Arch. Even the names, you're alien. Big Arch is your nemesis. Like, it's all Grand Theft Auto. That's all this is, even down to the characters. And had they named this Grand Theft Auto Spring Break Edition, I would have been there enough fucking heartbeat yes that would have been entertaining as shit because you know what wouldn't have happened jump cuts of calls home to mommy (laughs) fucking nonsensical scenes of them standing in the rain 20 minutes before you show us standing in the rain to steal the car this whole thing are we done can i can i can i sum up this whole thing is a waste of my goddamn time because it's a 30-minute TV special at best. Yes. I was so pissed. I have never done this before. (sighs) This is how bad I consider this movie, okay? We reviewed Howard the Duck, Dennis the Menace. Don't worry, darling, in my opinion. Yes. All of these terrible, horrendous films. I have watched the entire way through Every single time. Yeah. I made it 34 minutes into this movie and said, I can't fucking do this anymore. I paused it and actually watched the remainder of it tonight or this morning before we recorded. I had to take a (sighs) full eight hours of sleep (laughs) to reprogram, have coffee and breakfast and get my house clean before I could actually fucking focus on this piece of shit. For another hour out of my life. What this you was mean? You, terrible. What you mean? You didn't like the James Franco origin story of how he started his acting school? You didn't like that? Bill of like that, any, I believe. Any any piece of that? No, dude. This movie was trash. I there were a couple of pieces that I was like, all right, that was cool. Like them robbing all the people and and the Britney Spears. I, I like the like just how that was all shot and and the music behind it it that was great the the first part of it it's like oh okay this is going to be a movie where it's like spring break gone wrong they get arrested they get into trouble and then like they go back to you know college having learned some lessons or whatever um and then it, it went the whole GTA route and i was like i uh, even if you look at the front cover on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. The front cover does not, the front cover should typically tell you at least a little something about the movie. All this tells you is bitches in bikinis and James Franco. I mean, make all the inferences you want from there. But like, I got nothing out of this. Like, I thought it was going to be like a Malibu's Most Wanted type situation. <laughs> And it definitely, it was like if Malibu's Most Wanted turned into a drama, but it still had some like stupid, funny things. <laughs> like that's what this was. This thing was trash, dude. I, I, don't, I really don't have anything else to say. No, dude, this is just, it's, it's not, it's not good. It's not entertaining. I don't yeah. get what the fucking point was. Agreed. And again, and, and almost a don't worry, darling kind of thing. I don't like if your message was this, you crossed it up with this. Like if we're supposed to be seeing like strong females, yeah, you're confusing me because the first shots of this film are all exploitive tit shots and like chicks bush through their bikinis and gratuitous yeah. ass shots. So I don't know where I'm going. With this, you set no real tone for me other than the fact, like, I'm on an acid trip with teenage girls and James Franco. Yes. That's basically what happened. Which is nowhere to be. Like, if 
If you're no, I would have rather trip. been on a real acid trip and have my fucking legs cramp up again. I don't need this shit. If you're going to be on an acid trip, it definitely shouldn't be with girls in bikinis and James Franco. There's nothing good that can go with that. <laughs> No. We'll, end, we'll end it there. But for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was Spring Breakers.